Yes. The firing of a former top New York City official now under a whole lot of scrutiny. His name, Ricardo Morales. He says he resisted efforts by Mayor Bill de Blasio and his aides to help a campaign donor in a multi-million dollar lease dispute with a city agency. Well, tonight, you're about to meet that official. Morales, he negotiated contracts and leases on behalf of the city, and he is not going quietly into the good night. Dominic, he sat down with him. First of all, Richard, we reached out to the uh, mayor's office for comment, and they have not responded. This is perhaps a story about what can go wrong, terribly wrong, when big money enters politics. The key figures in this, a de Blasio fundraiser, who was also the now indicted restaurant owner at the center of the criminal case against Nassau County e Executive Ed Mangano and the former New York City Deputy Commissioner Ricardo Morales, who says he refused to play ball on allegedly providing a sweetheart deal. The restaurant owner did not apparently want to pay back rent he owed the city on his Queens restaurant of $750 thousand dollars after a long career in government where the deputy commissioner actually received the city's ethics and government award morales was fired the city said it was part of a reorganization of the agency but he was fired on the same day just hours after mayor de blasio's highly anticipated sit down with the feds earlier this year in February. Morales is now suing the city for $5 million, and this is his first TV interview. Attorney Robert Krause says as far as he is concerned, City Hall should honor his client. Counselor, what's the bottom line on this? This case is about how our city government is going to treat a civil servant who stands up to the undue influence of money in politics. Ricardo Morales stood up for the rule of law. I think he should get a medal. City Hall thought he should be terminated. We met with former Deputy Commissioner Ricardo Morales and his wife Yvette. They have been rooted in the same Bronx community for many, many years. Mayor de Blasio has responded this firing was not political. In fact, he said so this week. It was regarding your work. Right. Um, of course, uh, the mayor has to look for some kind of excuses. I'm a native son of the city of New York, born and raised here. Right? I married a native daughter of the city, a NYCHA girl. Right? For 35 years I've been married. I still attend the same church that I got my first Holy Communion on 50 years ago. I've been in this government. I raised, we raised three sons. They were also public servants. Mr. Morales, you were a deputy commissioner at the Department of Citywide Administrative Services with many years of government service under your belt, different agencies, until you were abruptly fired this year from your job. Do you consider yourself a whistleblower? Yes, I do. I think it's very clear that when I was fired um, that they violated my uh, constitutional rights to speak uh, honestly and freely uh, during a judicial proceeding. Who violated your rights? That would be City Hall and the mayor. Mayor de Blasio. Correct. All the way to the top. That's my belief, correct. Mr. Morales, is it accurate you were let go the same day just hours after Mayor de Blasio's highly anticipated sit-down with federal prosecutors. Absolutely. Happened the same day. Wait a minute, Mr. Morales. How do you explain that? Well, it, explain. I, it is clear to me that the message was not only for me, but for any public servant who had the audacity, right, really the obligation to speak out freely and honestly during any kind of judicial proceedings that going. I think that was a silencing moment, an example about when a person is going to do the right thing, that they had to be careful because of the political consequences. And I paid for that. Two issues here. We'll get to the restaurant in a second, but let's start with Rivington House and a law group, which was a Lower East Side nursing home which was flipped for luxury condos at a profit 
of $72 million. U.S. Attorney Preet Bharara investigated the Rivington deal as part of a broader investigation into whether the de Blasio administration gave special treatment to donors, but no charges were filed. Right. So the standard in government is, and I escaped the criminal bullet, the standard in government is a lot higher. Right? You have to have an ethical government, a transparent government. You have to have one that's accountable. One that's not accountable to special donor groups, but accountable to the people. And what's special about having career professionals handle these type of transactions is that it's in the right hands with the people who have the expertise and leaving the politics out of it. The second issue involves the owner of a Queens restaurant, Mr. Harinda Singh who owed the city $750,000 in back rent. Was there interference, and you were the lead official negotiating this, was there interference from City Hall? Absolutely, absolutely. So let's, let's just give a, a, a quick background on it. DCAS, as is the Department of uh, Citywide Administrative Services, is the agency through the city charter, and let's be clear, the only agency in the city charter that has the ability to handle leasing acquisitions and dispositions of real property. The expertise is there, right? Second of all, the men and women who handle this have years and years of experience, like myself. Out of 35 years that I've been an attorney, 30 years of this has been dedicated to real estate, real estate litigation. I've litigated hundreds of commercial and residential L&T cases, landlord-tenant cases. Why send a message to any donor or any other person that if they don't like what's going on with the professionals who have the expertise to do that, we could always do the negotiations at City Hall. And what's most damning about this, and which is most despicable that I think is that my understanding is from our former commissioner, Cumberbatch, that City Hall actually leaked out confidential settlement information to the other side. So virtually, City Hall was negotiating against the city itself. We weren't in the mix. Why? because it was a special donor. This whole idea that he's a poor businessman and the bureaucracy was killing him, he wasn't paying a dime of rent. He wasn't paying for the peer. What person in their right mind would want to say, let's help this guy out? I'll tell you why they wanted to help him out. There was economic development of that Astoria waterfront. Where his restaurant was. Where his restaurant was, and whoever had that restaurant and that lease was going to make a killing on it. And that's what this was all about. It wasn't helping out a poor guy. This guy had access, extraordinary access, to government. It is definitely a violation of the conflict of interest of rules. And I think that the, the, the mayor and his staff should be re-instructed on these rules. You mentioned your commissioner, Stacy Cumberbatch, she lost her agency, correct? She lost her agency, that is correct. And they moved her on, yes. Well, she was in a little bit better position than I was because I lost my job, right? And right now, my reputation. Mr. Morales, you received the City's Ethics and Government Award in 2009 for work as General Counsel of the Housing Authority. That's correct. Um, I, I put together a robust program, uh, trained 14,000 employees, created a hotline, uh, created an enforcement mechanism, worked very closely with the Conflict of Interest Board, and really created a model program um, uh, for the city in terms of uh, conflict of interest. But Mr. Mr. Morales, <laughs> explain this to me. How does one go from receiving the top ethics award to their reputation being tarnished? Well, see, I've worked under many mayors, three of them to be exact, Giuliani, Bloomberg, and now uh, de Blasio. What is, whether your politics are for or against them, the men and women who are the public servants do what is necessary to function as a city. We want all our mayors to succeed. We do because the city depends on it. But they must succeed ethically with transparency and accountability. Those three hallmarks of good government must be there. Here in this transaction, on these two transactions, the ethical piece 
and the transparency were missing. This is the same Mr. Singh that was indicted by the feds in the case of Long Island County Exec Ed Mangano and his wife, Mangano's wife, was indicted on accepting $450,000 for a no-show job, allegedly, over a four-year period. Absolutely the same, Mr. Singh. Uh, there's, there's, th this whole thing about this pure, poor business person uh, who needed help and that the bureaucracy was holding him up, it was a complex, very complex deal, and it was all really orchestrated to help Mr. Singh keep that restaurant were you aware of the fact that Mr. Singh was a priority for the mayor? Well, Mr. Singh himself told me that. Um, City Hall might have a little problem in their hands. I, I was going to say exactly that. City Hall has a, a problem, and saying this objectively, it's time to talk sadly because they need City Hall needs this to go away. It's been page one news this week in the New York Times. And it's not going away. Thank you very much, Dominic. Great job. We come back. We'll have an update. As we speak, Republicans attempting to repeal and replace Obamacare. We'll have the very latest from Washington.